producer, uh, came to us and, and was asking us to come up with some conceptual work for the robot. And uh, their first uh, their first mandate was, we don't want it to be anthropomorphic. We want it to be interesting and different because it's alien technology. It's coming from somewhere else. We don't know where this is from. So uh, we, we did a few uh, crazy designs uh, at the outset, probably about a week or two of design work. And then ultimately they settled on the very end, which will be ended up with. I think that was created by Aaron Sims company. Um, I'm sorry, For you sure. cut out a little bit on that last sentence about when you finally settled on one design. Can you say that again, Mike? Yeah, they finally settled on a design that they had already have. Uh, sorry, that they already had, which uh, was generated by Aaron Sims' company. Okay, so that was before it got to Spectral. That was before it got to Spectral. Correct? Got it. Okay. And then, uh, uh, it, you know, sort of the, the initial instruction to avoid uh, an anthropomorphic looking creature was exactly what they ended up. Right. So that's uh, we run at the design. Uh, it was something they already had in their, in their hip pocket and we're, we're betting and then ultimately they just decided to go with that. Got so it. once Got that it. was decided, um, we, we launched into figuring out how this was going to work on a human being. We had discussions with the visual effects people about how to, you know, fool the eye a little more by creating negative space within the suit. And, uh, and then we of course put Brian Steele's name forward as our, our, our prime candidate. And of course, he, he he does a beautiful job actually in this suit. Um, he's got to navigate some tricky terrain. What is the visibility? I've only seen the first two episodes. What's the visibility like in the suit? Fairly, fairly good visibility, relatively speaking. You no, know, the visibility is very low. Um, it's very hard to see. Um, in this suit, he can actually he had a pretty pretty decent line of vision. Uh, Oh, Mike. Oh, God. Our connection sucks. All right, do you have a hard line I can call you at? Yeah. Let me, yeah, let me call you back. Okay, the same number. I'm sorry, Mike. I can barely hear you. Okay. okay. All right, we're going to try that again. No worries. Okay, so you were, you were talking. Thank you. You were uh, you were talking, and by the way, I already texted Shannon, and we're going to chat too. Um, okay. Okay. So he'll Great. fill in the blanks. Uh, we were talking about visibility. Yes, and um, yeah, I think my last comment was uh, Brian's the best person to answer that question. But I think he had he had more visibility in this suit than in previous uh, suits that he had worn. Um, we we did provide uh, you know I think relatively good visibility in the suit. He, able to see up through the bottom of the chin of the, the robot. And, and is is he operating the, the head move, or is that an external RC-operated thing? Oh, no, the, the suit operation is, it's all it's all Brian. Um, he was even controlling the hand motions, uh, the, the finger movements. There was a version of the hands that was uh, animatronic, um, but he also had a version that he was able to control. Got so it. all of the movement you see is, is Mr. Steele most of the time. Fantastic. Uh, and what about that face? It's it's very cool, and as you said, it's... Well, I mean, I don't know if it was in the Aaron Sims design, but I like that it's not humanoid at all, and it's hard yeah. to read. It's color-based more. And, um, exactly. Let's, let's talk about that just a little bit. Yeah, so that was, that was one of the exciting challenges about this. We thought, wow, that's, uh, you know, uh, we had previously done some work with an artist named Jordan Wolfson, and we had designed some, uh, some come up with some ideas for a projection system that would, uh, you know, project on the surface of a, of a concave, or I'm sorry, convex uh, surface. And the solution that we used then was different from the one that we used here, which was a strictly a rear projection surface with a projector that was kind of doctored and uh, re-lensed to, to work in that in that close proximity and to get the, the, the you know the projection size that we needed onto the surface of the face but it was a, a high 
um, Lumen's uh, laser projection uh, Pico projector, which did the job beautifully. And uh, there are moments in the, in the uh, series where you do see uh, enhancements uh, done with CG, but by and large, what you're seeing is the actual projection onto the uh, surface. So cool. And that's how the, the character expresses emotion. So how much of it is is pre-programmed based on what the scene requires? How much of it is real time? What's the approach? So the approach was that uh, production was providing us with the, the playbacks. And they made the call on, you know, which playback was happening during when, you know, he's angry, it's, it's red and, and angry looking. When he's calm and placid, there are more pastel colors that, that have a more, you know, ethereal pattern moving around. Um, so uh, it was pretty much dictated by the director and the production uh, how that whole process worked. And uh, the, the switches on, on the projection itself uh, were done remotely. Got it. Got it. Um, now, I was really, um, at the beginning, before it turned into its humanoid form, I was a little sad because it was, it was digital, clearly, a multi-legged thing. And then once it turned humanoid, all of a sudden, it was like a suit, and I was so excited. And since, <laughs> and since then, I don't think I've seen any digital. Um, now, I'm only a couple episodes in, but what percentage of the character has been uh, shot practically, and what percentage has been digital? Would you say? Um, I would. I would probably round it up to about eighty-five, you know, to fifteen percent uh, in favor of practical. Um, it's mostly practical. Um, the the digital uh, participation is always present because they're always you know hollowing out spaces in Brian's body so that it looks like you're looking through him. But the performance is all, um, it's all brand steel. Um, uh, there's very little digital work, uh, at least that I saw in the first season. Um, uh, and I, I share your, your, your feeling. You know, when I first saw the, the initial iteration of the robot, I thought, oh, my goodness, I hope they didn't replace our, our suit, you know, because that happens sometimes. <laughs> and, um, and it was very exciting uh, to see uh, the practical suit used all, you know, almost through the entire series. Well, it's it's just a great thing to see. I mean, I personally feel like, you know, and I know you're involved in all kinds of stuff, theme park stuff, but I do see this real trend back towards building things. Uh, actors appreciate it. Filmmakers appreciate it. What has been the reaction to having this character on set uh, for the shoots? Um, as far as you, as far as you know, from the director, the production team, the actors, what have you heard? It's it's just uh, you know it's a it's a fabulous piece of uh, presence to have with them on set, and they've expressed that to us copiously. They they just think you know they they really loved the work that we did. They were very excited about the the suit, but but you're right. They were also excited about the possibilities that that opens up for them with regards to how much better is my is my actor performing because he's reacting to something that's right there in front of him or her, you know, and and so. They, I think, you know, I, I can't tell you how many times we take meetings with directors now where the first thing they say to us is, we want to do this as, as practical as we can as we can do it and use digital as an enhancement or as a, a place where it just can't be done practically. And that's really encouraging. You know, that's really exciting for us. Um, it, uh, you know, it's, it's always great to have digital uh, resources available because let's face it it's it's a tool that is very useful it's very it's very necessary nowadays but i think that in those situations where you're you know you're dealing in a tactile setting with people and and contact needs to be made and and reactions need to be more more believable i think you can't be practical and that's that's one of the reasons why i think it's so exciting that there's so much of our robot in the series especially for you know will robinson's sake you know they they interact quite a bit uh, together and uh, one thing that we learned on Stranger Things is that the kids really, really react to the monster. They love, they love seeing it in person. They, their performance is much more exciting for them, and um, it's a necessary thing to have. Absolutely, and uh, it shows in the performances and just the scale difference. Brian's got to be all of almost nearly eight feet and wearing that thing, seven and a half feet. Yeah. Yeah. And that little boy, it's fabulous. Just those. The yeah. tableaus of them sitting together in the woods, you know. Um, 
Well, yeah. I've only seen the first two, so I can't get into any more. I'm, I'm going to watch the rest of the season, but it really excites me, Mike. Uh, oh, and I'm so happy, man. I won't spoil anything for you. Either. Please don't. And con- <laughs> congrats. It's beautiful work. It's a memorable spin on on a classic robot and uh, just so happy for, for the entire team.